Hey, are you seeing strange lights or things floating in your vision? Well, as Billy Joel would say, you just might be crazy or you just might be having a vitreous detachment. I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, and today we're talking about flashes and floaters. Good optometry morning. We're sitting in my exam room today because this is where I talk with pa a few patients every single day about flashes and floaters. So today we're going to learn three things. Number one, what are flashes and floaters? Number two, what do they mean for your vision? And number three, what are you going to do about them? So first, let's talk about what flashes and floaters are. Flashes are exactly what they sound like. They're bright, momentary flashes of lights that can't be explained by any other light source. They are very often off to the side, but they can be in your central vision as well. Flashes are not typically normal. Floaters are semi-transparent particles that appear in your line of sight. They often look like amoeba or dust or lint, and they will slosh around as you move your eye about. They will be more prevalent against a bright uniform background like a blue sky or a computer page or a piece of paper. A lot of people will have floaters and those that don't can often be trained to learn how to see them. Floaters are a normal phenomenon. However, changes in your floaters are what we are concerned about. So there's a list of conditions that your optometrist is going to rule out when you have symptoms of flashes and floaters. But I'm going to focus on just two of these. Number one, posterior vitreous detachment, and number two, a retinal detachment. But first, let's go back to your grade nine anatomy class. So here is a model of the eyeball. The eyeball works just like an SLR camera. On the front, you have the cornea, you have the iris, you have a lens. On the back, you have the retina, and the retina is like the film on the camera. What's not on this model is the vitreous. And I tell patients to think of the vitreous like a clear water balloon filled with clear jello. And that vitreous sits inside the eyeball. And not only does it sit inside the eyeball, but then I want you to imagine that you take crazy glue on certain spots of that vitreous and you attach it to the retina so it stays in place. And that's the normal anatomy of the eyeball. Now, as a normal aging process, those crazy glue attachments become slowly separated away from the retina, and that process is called a posterior vitreous detachment. And so this vitreous water balloon becomes separated from the retina, and then it's free-floating, sloshing around inside the eye. And that's a normal change. Okay, so when you get a posterior vitreous detachment, you're gonna often get two associated symptoms. So one I said was floaters, and these are clumps of that gelatin are a little bit clumped more together, or areas where it was attached to the retina and now they're free floating around. And they will cast a shadow on the retina as light shines into the back of your eye and you will perceive them as these floaters. If, if we take a picture inside your eye with some cameras or other equipment, or if I take a look with this slit lamp microscope, uh, we can actually see those little particles floating around. The second symptom you get are flashes. And flashes you get because there are areas of that vitreous that are still attached to the walls of the retina and they want to pull away but they can't. And every time they pull on the retina, they tug. And every time it tugs the retina, the nerve fibers on the retina are stimulated and it sig send a signal back to the brain and you will perceive a flash of light. So you will note that I said earlier that a posterior vitreous detachment is a normal thing. So what's the concern? Well, 90% of the time it is normal and it separates cleanly and there is no issue at all. But 10% of the time, that vitreous will be so tightly adhered to the retina that instead of pulling your way cleanly, it'll actually rip a little piece of the retina and you'll get a little retinal tear and that can develop into a retinal detachment. And that's bad. And if you have that, we need to get you to a retinal specialist as soon as possible. So a key point here is that the symptoms of a posterior vitreous detachment and a retinal detachment can be the same, flashes and floaters. And the only way to differentiate is for an eye doctor to have you in, dilate your pupils, take a look in your eye and see if there is a break or a tear. So remember is if you have these symptoms, don't wait, call your doctor right away. 
A key thing to remember is that a posterior vitreous detachment occurs over a number of months. So when a patient has these symptoms, I will see them, I'll take a look at them in this exam room, 90% of the time I don't see a tear, and we'll have this exact conversation I'm having with you right now. But the thing I will stress to them is that they likely have a partial vitreous detachment, which means some areas have separated from the retina, but other areas are not. And so that process can continue and they could develop a tear at any point going forward in the next few months. And so I stress to them, if they notice changes in their symptoms or things getting worse, then they should call me and take a look, even if it's the next day. So pro tip for those optometrists and optometry students out there, if you want a great resource, check out this document produced by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. It's called the Posterior Vitreous Detachment, Retinal Break, and Lattice Degeneration Preferred Practice Patterns. It's a great synopsis and a great resource. So in summary, I want you to remember two things. Number one, if you have symptoms of flashes and floaters, I want you to call your eye doctor right away. Don't wait and see if they go away. And number two, if you have had a posterior vitreous detachment and you get new symptoms in that eye or get them in the other eye, even though you think you know what it is, call your eye doctor because they need to find out if there's a tear. Right, so thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you wanna hear more of this, hit the subscribe button and feel free to leave a comment or a question. I'd love to answer them and most importantly, have a great optometry day.